everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Indie Corner Radio. I'm your host Jonathan Moody and I've got an awesome guest here. Uh, let me have you introduce yourself, Miss. <laughs> Hi everyone. My name is Giovanna Casanova. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, evening, whatever time zone you guys are in. Uh, thank you for having me, Jonathan. Well, this isn't live. This is going to be pre-recorded and uh, aired on Tuesday. So, okay. just so you know. But uh, thank you so much. Like, I'm really excited about this. Um, so you and I have been friends for a while now, and I've been watching your career, like, constantly keep growing, you know, and I'm excited about that every time I see that you've got another gig. It's almost like every day you've got something going on, you know, is I, that I got to keep busy, <laughs> which is good. It's good. Um, always uh, good to keep busy. Now, um, were you always into the arts in some way or another? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, my mom told me that before I started talking, I was singing. I was just you know, like humming little little tunes and stuff and and things like that. And I always liked, you know, acting out my favorite uh, scenes from movies and doing little like accents and impersonating characters and things like that. And, I really like to like to draw and I did choir and, you know, theater and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it's always been a part of me, I would say. Wow. So you do impersonations? Do you still do? Yeah, them? yeah, I do. What, what is uh, what's your favorite impersonation to do? And will you do it for us? <laughs> I'm putting you um, on the spot. I know, but, you know, I can't wait to see it. Um, who should I impersonate? Freak. Man, I am on the spot. You know what's funny is that I expected this and I didn't even think about who it is I was going to do. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, anybody who says like they impersonate people, everybody wants to wants to see it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, how about we come back to that? Cause, OK, you yeah, think of somebody and then you let me know when you want to do okay. it. OK. okay. But so, okay, so you did choir and you did, uh, you know, you did drama, I'm, I'm assuming, like theater. Well, the funny thing is, is that I didn't actually take any theater classes, but I ended up getting a, a lead role just for my singing abilities. <laughs> like in a musical? Yes. Which musical? Uh, West Side Story. Nice. They, they apparently remade that with Steven Spielberg just now, you know. What's funny is that I actually auditioned for that. No, oh, wow. And were you, did you get a part at all? Or can you say no? No. 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 Oh, well, yeah. I'm sad about that. That was their loss, you know? <laughs> it's part of it's part of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still recovering. My voice is still kind of shot. Um, yeah. It's part of the business. I know, but you should have been like, I was the lead, damn it. You know, <laughs> like, I'm that big. You know? <laughs> Do you know who I am? Uh, man, they got way bigger names than than mine. That's for damn sure. But <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. So when you got into like, like, uh, you know, singing in choir, uh, do you think that at all helped your acting? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, not necessarily directly. I think what, what may have been like something that would help would be like the whole confidence level with just generally doing things in front of people. Um, so I guess in a way, yes. But as far as the actual skill goes, ah, you know what, actually, I take that back. I actually have a theory. Um, I was thinking about it too, that I feel like some of the best actors probably have some kind of musical training and it's probably, uh, and my theory um is because I feel like the best actors do a lot with their voice like I feel like they're not very monotone I feel like they do um you know they inflect quite a bit and I feel like 
that's partly because um, maybe they've had some kind of musical training and it's just kind of embedded in them. So their um, speech is more dynamic, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Some people probably have that. Um, I don't, I can't sing worth a lick like at all. So <laughs> I never even tried. Um, I, I do remember I was in one musical in my life, one musical. And uh, that was um, uh, Carousel. Okay. And, but I think it was, Car- was it Carousel? think so and i was uh all i remember is i was in the background you know okay that's it well there so you- all i had to do was lip sync because i can't sing so nobody oh, no, I'm losing- was that oh, okay <laughs> okay we're back i lost you for a second but then it caught yeah okay. we're back <laughs> <laughs> uh sadly it might do that my zoom's been acting really strange i don't know if it's mine or if it's just zoom in general you know yeah, I um I'm really surprised that my MacBook doesn't have Zoom like compatibility. So I don't know, it was weird. And then it didn't have Chrome or Firefox, and I'm like, what? I'm still trying to figure this thing out. I just got it. Oh, you just got your new MacBook? Mm-hmm. Is that your first time having a MacBook or like yeah. or Mac? Yeah, um, I've never had like an actual laptop ever. Like I have a little Chromebook, but like it's basically just an electronic notebook essentially that I I was with like this laptop is just incredible. This MacBook. Um, I'm still picking at my nails. How gross. Um, I'm still trying to get used to it. I'm in love with it and it does so much, but you know, things like it not having the Chrome or Firefox, like right in the app store. That's a little weird. Yeah. Uh, like I'm still getting used to like I've had mine for like a few years and I'm still getting used to it. So I get oh, it. Well, you know, mine has a uh, Chrome and has a uh, zoom. So I don't know. Maybe, uh, I, maybe I, you just got to install them or something. Yeah, I did install zoom, but it said that the audio couldn't be connected through the MacBook. Um, uh, well, you have a microphone, you have an external mic. Mine was, yeah. I was just going to use my computer mic. So in order to do that, I needed to have, either one of those browsers so i don't know gotta love technology man <laughs> whoop, whoop. i'm an old woman trying to catch up with the times apparently see i like i had a feeling you were kind of an old soul like just the <laughs> stuff you like post about and things just you sort of have an old soul don't you i i do i feel like i've lived a few lives at this point <laughs> really Aww. yeah I don't know if that's good or bad, like, because, you know, like, you're so young. I have no idea. (laughs) You know, maybe, maybe this is when you're, maybe you're like a Benjamin Button, you'll start going down in age, you know, and you'll be younger when you get older. That would be cool. That would be awesome. Be like those uh, old, cool, old old grannies who just like kind of hang out with everybody and, you know. Yeah, I'd be playing like like Spyro in an old folks home drinking Jameson and yeah. <laughs> Just don't break a hip. That's all I'm going to say. I'm breaking hips. <laughs> if you're going to break it, break someone else's. You know, <laughs> in the old. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk, uh, let's, let's talk about, so when did you get into like, you know, film acting? Film acting professionally uh 25 right i don't know how old i am anymore about six years ago about, so day, you're about 19 yeah i was about 19 when i started really getting into it professionally yeah were, did uh, you try it before like even before then um i mean yes and no what i mean by, by professionally is that i actually started you know getting like paid work and like became a like an actual working actress before i'd be like making like indie films with my friends you know kind of thing mm. uh, so just dumb little things little skits um yeah well uh, that's practice man like oh. I-, I feel like so many people don't practice anymore you know they just kind of <laughs> jump right into it I mean, some people are naturals, you know, but I'm yeah. saying, uh, well, I, I'm saying the exact opposite. I'm saying like people jump into it and they, they should be practicing. Oh yeah. I agree with you there. I was trying to be, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> see, there you are polite and professional. 
two people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so when you are, uh, when, you, when you're acting, is, do you have like a, a pet peeve of yours on set? Oh, gosh. Um, man, I'm going to sound like such a freaking feminist right now, but um, I, I don't like it when people are inappropriate, like sexually inappropriate. And I feel like that is a thing yeah, that happens. You just said you're feminist. That's not feminist at all. That's well, normal. Like, I, cause I always feel like they're always like attacking men, but I mean, it's women too. Women too. They're freaking nasty, man. Yeah. And well. some of the people that need to be like enforcing, you know, shit like that, they're the ones kind of starting it. And that's upsetting too. That upsets me more when people are like, I don't put up with that shit. And they're the one, you know, dry humping other people and stuff on set and laughing and making sex jokes. And it's like, there's a time and a place. And I don't think that's here. You need to be setting an example. Yeah. That's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. And I'll speak out on that all the time. Well, uh, you should. Yeah. I'm tired that's of not, uh, well, I mean, on set, definitely. No, not none of that. You know, keep that shit like private if you want to do that shit or something, you know, or whatever. But, they're like, both part but man, don't just yeah. I've, I've I feel like people are like, I'm a director. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, I'm a director. So, <laughs> like, oh, I feel well, like my I feel well, like my you, job's been attacked. <laughs> no, 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 no. I what, what I use director as an example, but I mean people right. generally use their titles as incentive or whatever and don't what? like it. what you don't like it no nope, don't like it no as you shouldn't um yeah i uh i mean i have a lot of pet peeves but we won't get into that well this is your oh, show. What? <laughs> like oh, why not <laughs> let's hear your pet peeves and go <laughs> i i just i get so sort of annoyed by um you know, just a lot of a lot of things in in general. There's so many people who can just buy credits these days, which sometimes it's really really good, you yeah. know, and and sometimes they're really good and that's fine. You know, I've I've had, uh, you know, I I've been on both sides. Like, I haven't ever bought a credit, but like unless it's like a special thanks or something, you know, which I'm just doing to help people out. But like, um, and I've had people who've come out because they've, they've done, they've helped me out and everything. And I love them. And I put them to a real work, you know, like I, I put them in as a, not just like a walk on, say nothing role, you know, I give them something if they're going to do that. But right. like, um, right. I mean, it, it's just sort of a thing where I, I just feel like people can say, well, I'm a producer now because I've, you know, spent. 50 bucks on a producer credit. And that's the worst thing is that the prices are way too low on Indiegogo these days. You can be a producer for $50. I'm like, yeah. you know, I mean, that's uh, kind of a big thing to me, you know? No, I, I agree. I agree. There are a lot, there are a lot of things actually, like you could buy awards. <laughs> what? A lot of people buy their uh, like magazine entries. Like they'll be like, oh, this article came out and everything about me they wrote it about me turns out that someone paid for it like they paid for it you they know what i mean for somebody to say nice things about them yeah sort of That's sad it, it it kind of is and it they oh no my battery's at 10 percent um can we do a quick little standby while i go grab my charger sure is that cool all right oh god sorry <laughs> we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen and we're back. <laughs> Hi. That's, that's okay. That you know, that's the one thing, you know, using your phone, you're gonna you're gonna run out of battery at some point. So Zoom kills it. Zoom kills it, man. <clears throat> I know. That's why I don't use my phone. I try to use my laptop uh when I do it. Just because I just right. don't I don't <laughs> like holding it either, which is what you're doing right now. Um, what hold me, can I do this? I had this all set up. I was so excited with my lights and stuff. <laughs> there you go there we got to see the inner workings of your uh setup here <laughs> and you had nice lighting and everything you had everything all set up like i feel terrible but uh that's no, my <laughs> should have met it before i just didn't have any of my equipment on me and i wasn't home and then i got home uh, i wow. was like yeah oh i we get it yeah so what were we talking 
about before? Uh, we, we were talking about like I guess pet peeves and uh, and things in the industry as far as like Indiegogo and stuff goes or whatever. Like you just mentioned buying awards and stuff. So <laughs> like, yeah, just, you, you can, can buy uh, anything. Yeah, apparently you can go to film festivals and like pay to win an award. Apparently, I like uh, yeah, and then publicity things like buying an article basically like oh hey write this little blurb about me say some nice stuff you know so yeah you guess that so crazy and i don't know why people would do that making Mm. themselves look good i guess I, i i i get it um so i i have like an award on my imdb right it so was from the fantastic <laughs> horror film festival or something uh, where I was a guest judge and I wasn't able to make it there or something, but they allowed one of my movies to be shown there. And so for some reason they gave me an award, for, like I even got a, like a plaque for just having my movie there. And I was like, and then, so somebody was like, Oh, you want an award? And they checked out my IMDb and they're like, what is this? And I was like, I mean, I didn't even know it was there, you know, on my IMDb. <laughs> yeah, I don't, my award might be on my IMDb. I haven't checked recently, but yeah. I can check for you real quick. Oh, and shoot. I got your, I got your, uh, your IMDb popped up here. In case I need oh, to, you know, oh, I'm helping your uh, IMDb star meter, which is another thing that everybody always goes crazy about, you know? Yeah. Check out my page, blah, blah. I, I don't even really share mine anymore. I don't think anyone clicks mine. I'm at 1,579,000. Please check out my... <laughs> yeah. Like, oh boy. You know? Um, Let's see. I don't see anything, but I'm sure it's there. Uh, uh, this is going to be the most riveting podcast ever. Um. <laughs> I, I don't see anything, but I'm very bad at this shit. Maybe it's on IMDb, just not on the app. I don't know. I don't know how it went. Yeah. Anywho. I didn't pay for award, by the way. I did not pay for it. I'm too broke to pay for things like that. <laughs> for the record. <laughs> I mean, I like even having the money to do so, like. I wouldn't do that. That's sad. Like, it I'm- is. It's sort of sad. Like, I'm sorry. It's like those people that pay for um, Twitter followers, you know, or Instagram followers. Even like, I know yeah. some people, personally know people that do that, and it's like, I mean, that's cool and all, but then you get a bunch of spam bots just like do 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 do. DM her. Love your gallery. DM this fucking page. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, they can DM me if they want to. Right. And on top of that, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a bunch of people who don't know you that get added to you without actually organically following you. And then of course you look at it and you're like, holy shit. Like who are all these people? None of them, like most of them are from like Egypt or something, you know? Yeah. Outlandish part of the world. It's like, how did you find me? But yeah. They found you because you paid, you know, such and such a money to, to have all these, you know, un, you know, fall. It's just, it's just ridiculous. So I, um, you know, and, and it's all because like, that is the Hollywood thing though. Like they want you to have followers, the more followers you have, the better chance you could suck at acting. But if you have a billion followers, they want you, you know, they want for that. Some- huge pet peeve of mine you know okay you know how many people have a tiktok and call themselves an actor <laughs> that becoming like like instagram famous but they mm-hmm. can't act worth a shit and they're all of a sudden getting like contracts and stuff and it's like poorly lip syncing to movies that already exist does not make you an actor i'm sorry like yeah. i don't know no, I, I i will say i have seen some really good tiktoks with people like lip syncing to those things like it's it's a thing but it's not an acting like it's literally no. just tiktoking no. you, you know? don't know the you don't know the jargon you don't know what to do if you show up to a set you know what i mean like mm-hmm. you don't 
it, oh man, man, this is getting to be. I'm all getting all riled up over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is like the I'm getting Giovanna really pissed off, you know, show. Ah! Which, I'm not trying to. I'm just we're just you know mentioning things that I mean it is, it is stuff that I feel like needs to be discussed. You know, it does. Oh, it really, really does. Like. Honestly, why don't you have the person with 9.1 million followers audition, you know, instead of going off their follower count? Because, again, you can buy, you could buy follows. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Am I supposed to be taken more seriously if I have, you know, a couple million people that don't even actually exist as opposed to 2,000 something people that I've actually met in my life or people that like me for my content, you know, like. That was what somebody was getting on to me about. And uh, because I've been asking for subscribers, right? And what I really mean, I don't really mean just subscribers to this podcast or these this YouTube or whatever. Um, I I do mean people that actually organically watch my stuff, you know? But I mean, you have to grow your audience. Exactly. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. I I get it. But what I'm saying is like it is it's gotta be organic. It can't be like, hey, I bought. Um, you know, I bought this bot that really sounded weird. Um, I bought this bot that, uh, that gets you, you know, a million, you know, fake people basically, you know, Yeah, fake followers. I want people to follow me. Cause I mean, even if I'm just, you know, going and I'm like spamming people with likes and comments and stuff, cause I want them to realize that I'm another artist and they go and look at my page and like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Let me follow her. You know what I mean? Like that's cool too but i i don't want some generic name that they pulled out of a computer system and like five numbers consecutively you know what i mean it's like right. like amber dot johnson four three two five you know what i mean yeah like, which is not yeah it's not a real person it's uh it's like a page that they created just to put these bots together or whatever right because anybody can make pages you know anyway. or whatever and so you they make all these pages and they have all the pages follow you and it's just so ridiculous it's like you can tell who's actually and what i've learned the most about uh social media is in order to get people to follow you for real you have to start what oh i yawned (laughs) um so you have to get people to um you know you have to actually engage in conversations with people absolutely that you yeah. don't know, right? Yeah. So if they're following you, you got to go on their page and start, you know, commenting or replying or whatever, because otherwise, I mean, you're just spamming people and you're just whatever, you know, like you're not yeah. being, you're not being real. Um, and people are going to unfollow you or not, you know, check out your stuff if they don't, if they're not interested in what you're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. It's, it's crazy though, but if you have a lot of followers, like, I don't understand how, like, you know, I mean, I, like people like Kim Kardashian, you know what I mean? Like she can't freaking message everybody or whatever because she has like way too many followers, you know? But, what? Oof. I said, like, I like I can't imagine how many DMs she gets. Like I get like 13 and I'm like, oh my God, stop the press. Like this many people are trying to talk to me at this at the same time. Like, <laughs> right. Like. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. And actually I have known some like celebrities who have talked to and they say they don't even check their DMs, you know, because it's usually one- it's what How do you be- like you can't, you know, cause you get too many. And then, then like, you probably feel like I, I have a feeling like if you got super duper famous and you had like a million followers, you know, and you had like, dms every day you know you yourself being the very sweet semi kind of emotional person that you can get at times that that anxiety would probably kill you you know of like oh man i can't respond to this person but but if i respond to this person i don't respond to that person i'm gonna feel like an asshole and then what if one day someone goes on their story oh man giovanna casanova is so nice she replied to my dm and and then someone's like she's the bitch because she didn't reply to mine like why doesn't she like me what did i do and then i'm like you guys i'm trying <laughs> right yeah i'd be like ah. 
I can't, I can't imagine like Britney Spears or anybody like that, you know, what they have to deal with every day, you know? You are crazy. And I didn't know, blah, I didn't know that uh, this was a thing. Uh, my friend messaged me like two, three weeks ago and she goes, OMG, you're famous. And then put a laughing face. And I'm like, why? And then she goes, I replied to your story. And then I sent you a message. And then Instagram prompted me and said that you, Giovanna Casanova is receiving more messages than usual, which may cause her to reply later than normal or something along those lines. And I was like, that's like cool. That's I awesome. guess that is awesome. But I'm like, I've never, for one, I've never seen that for myself. Like that's never happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I've messaged somebody and everything, but I'm like, that's great because that makes me feel a little less overwhelmed with the urgency to just get back to everybody all at once exactly it's gotta be, cool. like it's gotta be you know when you're dealing with this stuff it's gotta be tough you know yeah. period and like you you're always busy you're always like i was surprised you were able to make it today like i'm not trying to be you know sorry my dog is going crazy right now um and so yeah i um did not hold on let me go tell him hey rock Rocky. He wants to join the fun, I guess. Um, He's got stuff to say, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he has stuff to say. Come here, Rocky. Come here. I just don't want you barking. Come on. Come on. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where uh, if you are, you know, uh, de uh, dealing with, like, the public image and being busy all the time you know you can't respond to everything so there's I, gonna be people who are gonna like some people have to like apologize oh i'm so busy and stuff like that i'm like don't apologize you know like that's yeah I, people do get a little like offended if i don't get back to them you know and then so i'm just like hey like i totally am not ignoring you like I just don't have the mental capacity to carry on a conversation through DMs right now. Like if it's business related and it's urgent, yes. But if it's just like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing stuff. Like I'll get back to you later. Like, <laughs> I don't know. see, there's one of your impressions or something. You know, like you get, do little voices right there. Uh, yeah. Did you figure out of an impression you want to do yet? Have you. I'm um, uh, like, I can think of a couple characters, but again, like, uh, I'm, it's not as bad. Like I'm actually kind of close to what my actual voice sounds like, but I can do a couple characters if you want me to. <laughs> are you, uh, yeah. Are, are you actually from, uh, California or are you, uh, from somewhere else? What would be your guess? <laughs> I would actually guess you're from California. Yeah. I'm okay. California. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, no, but you like, it seems like you could, you know, could have been like from the Bronx or something if you wanted to be, you know, that, that would have been, that would, I went, I went, oh my gosh, I was, almost started talking in the accent. Um, I went to New York. I, was, I went to New York. <laughs> I went to New York uh, when in 2010 to go sing and stuff. And sad story time. I had like, no friends in the choir so I was hanging out with the tour guide the whole time and her name was Bernadette and she had a really 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 heavy accent and me being the sponge that I am I would hear it and then I'd start talking like a, you know what I mean and I would you know go around and and eventually I started talking like it so much I couldn't hear it so then for two weeks when I came back from New York everyone's like hey shut the fuck up and I'm like what are you talking about and they're like your, your voice and I'm like what are you talking about? yeah and then <clears throat> we went to medieval times in New York. And I went and I was talking to the lady behind the counter because I was going to buy this metal rose from uh, Phantom of the Opera. Like, it was like, I know that they had like little gift shops there that was gimmicky or whatever. Anyway, uh, I was talking to her and she goes, oh, what, what part of New York you're from? I'm like, I'm not. And then she was like, oh, you, you have the accent. And I was just like, and then the piano accompanist's son who was just there because his mom was there. He was like, yeah, you've been talking like that for like two days now. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just like, shit. <laughs> so yeah, when I went back to uh, my, my school for like two weeks, I was still trying to like hear it and get rid of it because that was embarrassing and probably really my friends. <laughs> well, that's, 
really cool. I did not know you were a sponge. So like if you hear a voice, like if you hear an accent, you kind of pick up on it, you know, that's, that- that's, that's kind of what has helped me with a lot of them because yeah, I don't know. Uh, like I did voiceover in a British accent uh for a couple different things one was like me narrating and then one was uh for this movie called survivor's choice which should be coming out soon um but yeah like doing a british accent's like one of my favorites um I, can't, a lot like, of- I, I think like i always think i can do an accent but i really can't you know like what i can would be the one that you think you're best at I used to, I used to be really good at like, uh, I think, I think I used to be really good at Scottish accents, uh, because I'd, I'd watch Mike Myers all the time, you know, and, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite movies is, so I, so I, uh, married an ax murderer. I don't know if you ever seen that movie or not, but, uh, he, he was like, he always yelled at his, uh, son. Well, it was always Mike Myers playing like himself or, and his dad right in the movie. <laughs> And so his dad would always be like, "Heed, move now, get the paper, you know, right? And shit like that. I don't see, I don't, like, I can hear it, you know, how I think it sounds. <laughs> and I'll listen to it later and go, that sucked. That was terrible. That was like the worst, <laughs> you know? Or no, that was, that was good. I liked it. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so I, I love, uh, you know, was it... Uh, I, I love the Scottish accents. I, I used to be okay at uh, British accents. Don't like doing them because like they always sound like the generic thing that like, you know, like jolly good, you know, or whatever, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like there's no real way to just talk like a normal conversation unless you're actually from there. You know what I mean? So, Okay. Let me give you an example. So one of the things that I like to do is speak in a British accent. Like it's something that I naturally do because you know what it is. I actually naturally do it because I do it so much. So just like anything, uh, practice makes perfect. And if you don't do it a lot, then it's not going to sound natural. So that's exactly why I like to, I'll actually go out to stores sometimes with my friends and I'll, I'll talk in an accent and, you know, see if they catch on or see if they say anything like, oh, is that your real voice? And I'll be like, oh yeah, it is. Or something stupid but I, I like to do it a lot because it's fun and it makes me better at it and makes it sound more natural in my opinion you know so I've called so many people I've prank called so many people doing stupid voices and everything and they 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 wouldn't guess who it is so there you go I was actually gonna ask if you did that like if you ever just fuck with people with like an oh accent. yeah oh, <laughs> it's fun <laughs> you're just it's- like you just start speaking your accent and they're like, wait a minute. I thought you were American, but no, no, I, that was my American impersonation. <laughs> Did you like it? I, I guess you fell for it. Then. All right. <laughs> that is awesome. He's like, hello, Charm. Nice to meet you. My name's Elizabeth. Let's <laughs> get no, There was no Giovanna. She was just made up. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a fake ass name. I mean, come on. It's my, uh, fake. Yeah. well I, you know it's got to be funny because you have like the mo- one of the most like famous iconic last names you know like, <laughs> you know like so people probably think that is fake right you know oh yeah is that your real name yeah i'll show you my id right now pull it on my fanny pack here it is well i mean people do have like fake names you know oh. or whatever like oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's almost like a game. I love to I love to find out who has an actual fake name and who has a real name, you know, or whatever in this industry because what think it, what was your impression of my name? Did you think it was a stage name or did you think it was real? I thought it was real actually. Um nice. I, I don't know why. I think it's just because like I mean it could have been fake, but I was pretty sure it was real. I don't know. Like I I, do, I don't know why, but I just like I never assumed it was fake. And uh, oh, well, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have been like, that's a fake name. She's been, <laughs> she's been lying on Facebook. Uh, you know, it's funny because Facebook's been taking down those people who have like fake names and stuff, making them have that's, a real name. I, I really appreciate that they do that because that's irritating as hell. Uh, I'll get like, like, Max son to baby Mac daddy for 2069, like trying to 
uh, sent me a friend request. I'm like, just what's your real name, dude? Come on. Like, just okay. put your nick, your street name in your nickname portion on Facebook. Like, it's not that big a deal. If you want to have some crazy name, go on IG, go on Snapchat, but not Facebook. You know what I yeah. mean? I feel like putting a name to your face. Mm-hmm. Oh. I agree. I don't know. 100. 100 percent I agree because I feel like that's uh, a lot of that's the problem, you know, is uh, you know, those people who are aren't being real, you know. Um, and so I mean, but that's that's the problem with like social media period is the internet can make you be whoever you want to be, you know, like I, I agree with that. I will even admit myself, I feel like on social media, I try to show the best version of myself at all times. Um, they're okay. So here's, here's my take on it. I want to be a little bit more vulnerable. I want to be a little bit more true to my day to day, what I'm feeling, what I'm doing, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, everything that I'm doing is real, but like how I'm feeling isn't really portrayed how I want to on social media is because when I have put it up online, it, like my genuine feelings, if there were any form of negative feelings, people would immediately message me and be like, you should probably take that shit down. You look messy. Like no one's going to want to hire you if you fucking sought drama. I'm like, how am I starting drama? If I'm like, Hey, I'm not really feeling that great today. Mentally, you know, hope you guys are having a good day, whatever. No, they say that you, you like, you shouldn't put any of your negative feelings on social media and I think that's unhealthy to be honest like I do it my I try to keep my happy self on social media more mm -hmm. because maybe that is the best way to do it when you're a professional but I also think it's kind of unhealthy because it gives people this unrealistic like standard of living you know, like, oh, I wish I was as happy as so-and-so. Meanwhile, so-and-so was fucking, you know, having a panic attack every single day. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but they can't let the world know because they're afraid that people aren't going to want to hire them, you know? I, so. Well, we've had this, I think we've had this conversation in uh, DMs before because, in private message, because we actually start talking about that because you did post something very real onto your uh facebook and i i responded to it and we chatted about it and and i feel like i mean it wasn't therapy or anything but it was like i mean at least you know if you're going through something you should talk about it you know um but i, I can see where you should draw a line you know what i mean yeah like you like okay so I'll use this as an example, but I won't say the person's name or anything. It's not somebody I don't think you know. Um, but this, there's a person that's friends with me on Facebook would post everything bad about her boyfriend all the time, right? They broke up, so later on, whatever, she gets back together with him, and all of a sudden, everybody knows her business about him and her and blah, blah, blah. And now, all of a sudden, they don't like him, and her and his people don't like her you know, because they both did the same thing, put their own business about their sides of the story, you know? Right. So now that they're back together, like it becomes this thing where it's like, oh my God, it's us against the world. And I'm like, no, it's just, you put way too much information out there, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, the world knows all your dirty laundry. So it's, they're not against you. They're just aware of how it actually is. Right. Like Which, you can be with that person because you put, on Facebook two weeks ago that he hit you or something stupid. Like, oh no, they just, they just are jealous of what we have. And it's like, no, you're an abusive relationship. We all know it. Get the fuck out. And then you seem like an idiot for going back. I'm guilty of it. I've done it before. Like, you know what I mean? Well, as far as going back to a relationship you should be in. Um, but I feel like people online would have no idea because I don't talk about that stuff. You know, there, I think there is a line. I think mm -hmm. there is a line. Uh, because slander and libel do exist. And the more ammunition you give somebody, they can use that against you, even if it's, you know, and they can twist it however they want to, you know, because I've yeah. been there. So. 
it's crazy i i like I just, I don't want to, I, like, I don't like seeing drama, you know? Like, I'm like, save that for reality TV, you know? Like, yep. and even all that's fake, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's like, do you ever, do you ever get that occasional, like, person on Facebook that will just, cont- like, every time they go onto a set or every time they work with somebody, they'll do, like, a 15-page essay on their post about some person and they'll name drop them and they'll talk just horrible things just like almost every single time they're they're anywhere doing anything with anybody and it's like dude like you must be insufferable like yeah stop you know so i like i agree with you i think there is a line like i think it would be healthy if more people were accepting if you know for example when i feel like posting something like guys i'm not doing okay mentally right now i'm sorry if i I'm not getting back to you as soon as I have been or vice versa. I feel like that's kind of healthy to let people know like, Hey, you know, we're all human. Um, This is where I'm at. You can connect with me, you know, Mm -hmm. but if I'm like, everything's great, everything's awesome. I'm happy. I'm glowing on this and that. And then other people can be like, man, like it could hurt because they just don't know. They just don't know. That's crazy. That's like, uh, I mean, the film industry, it, it's terrible because, like, it's just, it's hard sometimes uh, to just see um, all the stuff that's happening, like, you know, indie or Hollywood, you know? Um, yeah. You know, but sometimes I feel like people just put too much information out there, you know? And we need to sort of need to dial things back, you know? Let yeah. things kind of work out the way they're supposed to. I will agree with you there. There are some things that are better left like to be made private, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I agree. Anyway, um, let's see. What So what have you been up to lately? Oh my gosh, so much. Okay, um, so today, like three hours ago, I think, I don't even know what time it is right now, I recorded a um, commercial spot, uh, a voiceover commercial spot for um a tech company in our town called bitwise um yeah i filmed a chick chancy which is a casino local casino i filmed a chick chancy commercial um not that long ago i've done two indie films uh like pretty much back to back uh not that long ago like two weeks ago ish um I've been booking photography like crazy since I I've got- seen that. Holy cow. That's awesome. Like, and you've been posting a lot of the pictures and stuff and they look amazing. I've, well, I've told you this personally, but they look amazing. And so oh, and I everybody work- should book you. Huh? Everybody should book you. Everyone should book me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was, uh, Cause today my backdrops and stands came in for my headshot backdrop and my green screen so um i was gonna make a little post today when we were done and be like actors if you need to update your headshots you know like i'm one of the cheap ones (laughs) haha you know what i mean like hit me up (laughs) nice well good yeah uh, a colleague of mine said that he's going to give my uh contact information to some of his people in los angeles too so if you know actors from out there need headshots they can come to me or i can go to them or what have you um because i mean the ones in la are just ridiculously expensive and like i i understand why i totally understand why after starting this whole photography thing i completely get why they charge so much before i was like it's kind of bullshit like why would Mm -hmm. you i get it i get it now but anyway i'm still gonna start kind of low but i do want to work my way up of course if you're not good at something don't do it for free that's my motto um or like in the three amigos he's like no 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 show yeah, <laughs> yeah um but yeah I'm, you I'm should get, i mean you should get paid something but yeah it's probably better right now especially because here here's my opinion on things um you know lately because covid hit really hard Um, and a lot of businesses and a lot of people are out of work or whatever, you know, uh, people 
are 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 hoping for like cheaper rates for everything you know yeah um you know because just they can't afford it so for you to say hey you know um you know come to me i'll give you the professional you know job but lower rate you know than my competitors that's just that's just pure business you know sense. And, you know I've, I've been pleasantly surprised at my peers and like friends not just being like take pictures of me for free like they're actually asking like hey what are your rates i'm like <laughs> oh thank well, you like because people were asking for free lessons and stuff before and free like you know information about like casting calls and like just stuff like that. Like people were always looking for handouts. So I was worried that once I started doing photography, it was going to be the same thing, but no, people are actually like doing it the right way. And I'm like, thanks guys. I appreciate the support. Cause I mean, that's what it is. It's support. It's all that it really is. Well, you know, if you give me, do you have like a website or anything? I do have a website. It's in the works. Um, I don't know if and when it will be done because I mean, to be completely honest, my ex-boyfriend started it. So I don't think he's going to finish it. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I should actually see if it still exists. If not, I mean, you could do something similar sounding and just do it yourself. Yeah. It looked really good though. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer, man. See, that's, (laughs) that's the problem with dating people that, uh, that, that, that are really good at something, you know, because then when, you know, when you break up, if you break up, then that, you know, you lose that, you know? Yeah. So I didn't even ask for it. He was just like, here's the prize. It's not done yet. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. And then, then bye. See ya. <laughs> oh, well, there goes my website. Fuck. <laughs> okay. He should still finish it. I'm just saying, you know, finish yeah. what you started. I, doubt it <laughs> well uh you know i don't understand why anybody would leave you by the way you are so sweet you know and you know a million accents so that must be fun <laughs> you know, just hanging out with you, yeah. <laughs> you know? it, 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 like just from this conversation you will all automatically turn into somebody else so i can just imagine hanging out with you and just be like here's uh you know G- giovanna and like 10 different personalities <laughs> kind of how it is like I think if you were to ask my friends my close friends they would probably say that I do my accents more than I speak in my regular voice probably you like random pretty- like I'll be like I don't know I'll just be doing things and I'll just start talking in whatever accent just because like can you hand me the the cup I don't know I don't know how it's the first thing that came to my head but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well maybe that's the first thing that came to your head because that was the first thing that would come to your head when you're just talking with somebody going about life yeah, yeah just going about life you just start talking to a Russian accent I mean you know why not right exactly why not when in Rome you know yeah. uh you sounded you sounded very like uh Natasha from Boris and Natasha from the Rocky and Bullwinkle. I don't know if you ever saw that or not. It's been like forever. Yeah. So that's deep in the archives right there. Maybe that's where it's where it stemmed from. I don't know. Maybe. Um, you know, you have to learn somewhere, right? You have to pick it up somewhere. And it's so funny that cartoons, I mean, because literally <laughs> they're just all like, you know, sounds. You know what I mean? They're like their voice. So yeah. you, like, you probably pick stuff up like that. Yeah, there'll be times where I'll be just speaking and they'll be like, you sounded like Trisha Takanawa from Family Guy. I, <laughs> and I, I, I was never into Family Guy as much. Like I watched it, you know, and, and everything. I just wasn't huge into it. And uh, or that's like, well, Tom, I'm standing here. Something, 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 something. <laughs> I'd be like, um, <laughs> I just did it. Now I'm nervous. So I'm wondering but, if yeah. that was. I have a friend who actually was in, uh, you know, there, but I don't think that was her character. That just sounds like it could have been. Oh, she was Joyce Kenny. 
Oh, Joyce Kenny. Okay. So she's the, she's the other one. There's Tom, Joyce, and Trisha. And Ollie Williams. <laughs> Let's go right. <laughs> it's hella funny. It's so funny. Um, it's it's weird to know like actual famous people at sometimes or whatever people I grew up with, but a lot of it comes from like social media, you know, and reaching out to people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I can't even like, I legitimately can't say like something that is potentially happening because I just social media wise that actually happened that hooked you up with this job. I can't even say, but it's like extremely exciting and awesome. I can't wait to the day that I can. I was like, ah. Did you sign I, an NDA? Not officially, but I still think it's smart that I don't say anything right now. It's funny. Uh, just today, which is, this is, uh, was it, this is Tuesday, but this is like a week from when this is actually going to come out. Um, so just today, I, I found out, like, I guess Tyrese Gibson said something about uh, Marvel and uh and everything saying that he was that the uh the morbius movie that jared leto's in is uh was it um uh that 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 takes place in the marvel cinematic universe and somebody asked him does it take place in the marvel cinematic universe and he said yes right you're not supposed to like if you like i don't know what the the rules are with sony because sony owns that you know yeah. uh thing but like I don't know if Sony and them had a talk because Marvel denied it. You know, they went on and publicly said, no, this is not true because it became news. You know, once somebody said something like that, it's over. It's like, Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. I like, I'm like, I want to say it, but it's not the right thing right now. So eventually when they give you the, okay. And usually it's the, and I love this because I'll, I'll send people scripts and they'll ask me, you know, when can, can I say anything about this, you know, or whatever. And usually I'll tell them after I've announced something or said something, you know, or whatever, because I mean, that's the way it should be, <laughs> you know, like you shouldn't have some actor, you know, and, and that's when you know they're new, you know, when they, they will just blurt everything out, you know because you're not supposed to do that that's a that's a no-no yeah and last thing i'll share uh i heard this from a friend of mine i'm not gonna say who but there was a it was a friend who's an actor she had actually posted and i think she deleted the post uh probably i don't know why but she posted that and another actor came up to her uh she had gotten an actual part you know in a movie like a i don't think she was a featured extra i think she was actually like got you know, a, a bump up, you know, or whatever. And yeah. uh, this like extra said, Hey, I want to trade. <laughs> She's like, no. The odd of that extra. Like, <laughs> no, I don't want to trade. You're like, oh, come on. Yeah. And she kept bugging her. And then she sure, like, give up my dream because some schmuck wants my job. Like what? No, that actually yeah. happened. To- that happened to me in choir once. And my dumbass said, okay, I had this solo and I'd been working on it. And I've been working on it. And the day that I got the solo, this same person was like, she didn't deserve it. So-and-so deserved it. And I still gave her the fucking, why did I do that? Anyway, so it was like, we were walking out to the stage and this girl goes, can I have your solo? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I've kind of been practicing. We've been doing it with the choir and then she's like please and i'm like fine why did i do that why did i do that and if you're listening just know that was fucked up but you're not gonna listen because you don't care is she even friends with you on facebook no i don't think so (laughs) she'll look it up and she'll find you because like that's the funny thing is a lot of these people are just like sort of like they go on with their lives they do whatever but they don't really follow their dreams, you know. I don't think a lot of people don't, because either they get too scared, or they get, you know, or they just don't think they deserve it, you know, or whatever. And then, um, you know, but the people that do follow their dreams, they're doing it because they really care. Like this was something that they've been born to do. Like you, you were born to be an actress. You were born to be a singer. 
you were born to do all these things you know i was not born to be a singer and i'm okay with that you know like i have uh i've accepted that i can only sing in the shower or in a car when like there's nobody around apparently because otherwise <laughs> or i sing with my friends who know i'm bad singer and they don't care you know well i'm a vocal coach so if you ever want to change that I'm your gal. <laughs> I, I'm deaf in my left ear, so I can't like my ear. It's just, it's just bad. Like I can't tell. I don't have. I don't have tone. I'm tone deaf completely. But it's okay. I'm like I said. I'm okay with that. If uh, but if I ever feel like I do need a vocal coach, you know, one hundred percent, you. That actually doesn't matter because you can feel the vibrations of each right note. Just saying my parents would uh go crazy if i actually could sing later so i'm just saying maybe maybe that's something we'll work on someday you know? we should uh we what should. are your rates for that <laughs> come on we'll talk about it over like over dm you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> i was just saying because you were saying before you're uh you know and what um, are your rates like, nice callback nice call yeah because then you know other people will be like hey can you be my vocal coach for free like fuck no, bitch! You know how hard that is, you know. Like, been years perfecting my craft, and damn, and I actually, you know, I'm super educated on it and stuff. Like, you know, it my- sucks being an indie producer because I want to pay everybody, you know. Like I, you know, what I mean, but it's expensive, you know. Like. It's uh, expensive. So sometimes people will do stuff for free and then I feel terrible, but then. No, you know, I, okay. I mean, I probably even shouldn't be saying this cause I don't want people to get offended either way, but like I do stuff for free if I think it's worth the time. And if I have the time, mm-hmm. you know, but these days I've been more inclined to say no, just because I've been getting so busy and like, cause acting makes me happy. Like other things I won't, I won't do for free. And when it comes to acting, like that makes me super happy. So, like, I'll take on a role and do it for free as long as it's not, like, a feature film and it takes up so much of my time, you know? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's great. And, like, do it just because it makes me happy. And if the person is, like, you know, like, I have the script, I have a part for you, but I can't pay. I'm like, send me the script. Let me read it. What are the dates? What are the blah, blah, blahs? And if I like the character, I like the script, and I know that they have like good enough equipment to where I could put into my demo reel, at least something like that. And if I'm going to get IMDb credit, then I'm I'll probably take it, you know. But it's been hard. it's been harder to say yeah to free gigs these days. I get it. I get it. It's tough, you know. But that's in the, you know. in the indie world is difficult because you understand like time and effort and skills and everything it's all it's all worth something and you know you don't want to make people that, that feel like they're not worth it but shit's tight these days you know i um i got invited to go up to dc which is like three hours away you know to play a part this weekend and i had to turn it down and just don't don't have money to just go up three you know three hours there three hours back to act in a um in a in a small role it sounded like it was a small role which i mean what he called it a cameo which was nice kind of made me feel a little special um but you know but you know it was like i I like and i told him i really appreciate it like 100 percent. but unfortunately i just can't and he said he had like 40 other emails he was you know he was just asking me because he really wanted to work with me and i said dude we'll work together just Fortunately, not for that one, but we'll work together, you know, and that's what I love about this industry, you know, like I would, if it were like literally like an hour away or something, I would have, I would have done it hands down. I would have said, yep, let's do it. Uh, But unfortunately, because then you got to come three hours back to three hours there, three hours back and probably at least three hours there, you know, right. I mean, even small rules, like where you're just on and off it'll probably take it three hours at least oh yeah you can you know? never never expect it to be anything under two hours right even like ever so yeah no not at all so and plus you just don't know how indie films are you know yeah, like like i always tell my friends like okay 
for example, I had this, this friend that wanted me to work up a party with her because she used, used to do like princess parties and I would dress up like a princess and I'd go sing for kids or whatever. And she was like, Hey, be available this day. And I was like, no, I film. And then she goes, what time? And I was like, uh, call time is four. And she goes, well, it's perfect. The party's at six. I'm like, how, how is that perfect? How no. is that? Like, no, like that, they think that, it only that, takes an hour to, or something like that, you know, to hour, I, I, hour and a half to film, you know, how this works. It's going to take a lot longer than that. Like, oh. you know, I'm not available. I'm just not available, you know, like, and you can never, ever, and people will be like, when are you done? I don't know. You can never tell. Right. Like, I mean, I can give you a guesstimate, you know, of how long it's going to be, but we were shooting and a, that, uh, we, we had that. what? And you, you give them a guesstimate and then you add on two hours from your guesstimate. That's usually how it works. <laughs> and sometimes that's even wrong. Um, we, we had a shooting schedule for a shoot and, um, this is the last time I've ever planned this out. There was like only six hours that we planned, right? Six to 12, right? Yeah. Yeah, When eight hours, you know, and two hours extra. And even then we were, uh, it was just getting too late, you know? And I was like, we need to get back. You know, we need to get back, get home for a little bit. We'll, we'll finish it up. We'll go two hours early to like tomorrow and make up the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately that didn't even work because we still had, you know, whatever. So like, we just, we got to realize, you know, you got to, you got to do what you got to do, you know, change things up and switch it up and make it work. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. You were, you're super duper sweet. And, um, you know, I feel like more people should cast you. I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, thank you. I'm all just make tag me in it. Say that. That's all. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just get everybody, get everybody, Hey, everybody cast her in your movie. Cause you know, you'll be very happy. Um, <laughs> so is there anything that you want to like, you know, any advice that you have to, uh, you know, uh, people starting out in the acting industry? This is what I say to all people starting out in the acting industry in any industry at all, ever, ever, ever. If you want something, work for it and do it because it is not unattainable. If you think, oh, I'll never be cast in a movie. Well, then you'll never be cast in a movie. The second that you tell yourself that you can't, you won't. But if you tell yourself that you can and you work towards it, you absolutely will. So work harder than anyone that you know. You know, be more knowledgeable than anybody that you know. And work, actually work towards it, you know? Because everything that can, if you see it in the world, it can be accomplished. So no dream is too big and just work your ass off to get there. I 100% agree. I feel like uh, the, the thing is people just want things handed to them. Um, I just want like that girl we talked about wanted that role. Like she didn't work for it. She didn't want You know, I want your role. So I'm going to bother you until you give me your role. No, that's not how this, that's not how this works. You have to earn it, you know, and everything. And the people that do earn it, get it, you know? Yeah. Um, so you work your ass off, you know, and, and that might mean doing a million you know, auditions before you actually get one, you know, get a part. Exactly. You got to pay your dues. That's another thing that gets on my nerves. So many people message me because they know I'm nice and I'll listen to them, but they'll listen, they'll message me and be like, Oh my God, I'm so mad. How, you know, and they'll get mad at me when I support a friend of mine and they'll be like, why are you supporting them? They always get roles. They're always going to get that and everything like that. And I'm like, well, I mean, they're my friend and they're working their ass off, you know, like you can be the same way. You just need to keep doing it. You know, if, if people pity party you into casting, that's not the type of people you want to work with. If you have to pester someone to give you a role, are you really going to be proud of that? You know what I mean? Actually, I would say some people might be because they don't know better, you know, because if they, some people, if they are pestering, the people into giving them a role and everything, you know, um, then they don't know that they shouldn't be doing that. You know, what was that? How's it? They don't know. They don't know. No, (laughs) no, they don't know at all. All right. Well, it was a pleasure uh, chatting with you here. Um, And how can people reach you if they uh, would like to cast you in something? 
Um, they can uh, reach me at either my personal Facebook page at Giovanna Casanova, G-E-O-B-O-N-N-A-C-A-S-A-N-O-B-A, or my uh, business page, same thing. Or you can ca- uh, blah, blah. you can go to or email me. I can't speak English. Email me at Casanova.geo1996 at gmail.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram, Giovanna.Casanova.Official. Nice. How long do you have that email address? I'm just wondering. Casanova.geo? Yeah. What? Uh, oh, it's like 1996, question mark. Uh, I don't know. I think it's been like seven-ish years. Ever. Okay, I was going to say since you were a teenager at least, you know, or whatever, you know. Kind of feels like a teenager thing, you know, with the, with the number, you're, you know, I used to do it all the time. And now uh, I've been lucky enough where uh, I haven't had to do that. You know, I, I have like business emails that I use, you know, or whatever. But I mean, uh, yeah. had it for a while. Yeah. Well, if you stick around, uh, I'd love to chat with you after. But uh, everybody else, thank you guys for checking this out. Uh, let us know what you guys think. And uh, tune in uh, next week. And then after next week, we are off for a month and two days. So, uh, but we'll be back. So thank you guys. And hope you enjoy it. Bye. Bye.